Hey, Rail Birds, here we are at the Western BCA 8-Ball Championship. This is the Elite Singles Division, and this is the Finals. We have James DeVee versus Stan Tarango. James DeVee sitting in the hot seat. He must be beat twice. This is true. Double elimination. Stan Tarango coming through the B-side. I'm being joined by our special guest commentator, Scott Frost. How you doing, Scott? Thanks for, tuning Thanks for joining us. Kevin, thank you for having me. I'm excited to do this match. I know Stan quite well. He's pretty on that bar table. And I've heard a lot about James DeVee through a couple of friends of mine, Tony Bloom, Julie Bloom, my sponsors. And I've heard he's a real solid bar table player. Oddly enough, I think I know him. I just don't think we've ever battled it out. So I'm looking forward to do this match. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks for having, thanks for uh, joining us. All right, so yeah, James DeV, he's been traveling the country, playing a lot of uh, tournaments, getting a lot of seasoning, uh, as as one would say. He's a definitely a force to be reckoned with, and uh, he went for a steal in the Calcutta. Uh, Stan Tarango went for well over two thousand, I think twenty seven hundred or something like that. But James DeV, someone stole him for seven hundred bucks. Nice, and, nice. And here he is. Here he is on the A side in the finals. So what are the rules, Kevin? Is it take what you make, or is it open after the break? Let's go over the rules real quick. We are playing CSI rules, eight ball. It is alternate break. It is rack your own. The table is always open after the break, uh, regardless of what his pocket is. So it is not take what you make. The eight on the break is neither a win nor a loss, and this is a call ball and pocket game. Sounds good. It looks like he's going to play this 11-10 combination right out of the gate. I don't know if he wants to go into the two or not. He did. It's not exactly the layout he wanted after that. I think if he hits it a little cleaner, that stripe plays next in the corner. Um, instead, it, he caught it real first. He's going to play that stripe anyway. Uh, and I don't blame him, but because he's got to move those two balls there. He's got to get those opened up. Like I say, if he hits that combination a little cleaner out of the gate, the 11 stays right there in the pocket, and this run out becomes much easier. I don't think he can break these out, Kevin, using the 12. So I think that he's got to... He's, he's looking at possibly the carom. He's not happy with it regardless because it was much easier... Uh, then he's made it here. Uh, therefore, he's going to have to manufacture something, whether he does it right now or does it later. Uh, I don't think the 12 is the shot. I, I like him playing the carom on the, on the 11 or even the bank if, if he's confident, but it's tight. The carom looks much better, and he's going to come away with a shot regardless, noting that stripe down by the three ball. Uh, at worst, he would get a shot on that if he played the carom. He's got to play the 11 here, in my opinion. Yeah, he's in a tough spot if he wants to try to run these out. And even playing safe is not terribly easy unless he wants to just duck behind the 13 or something. But uh, yeah, you, yeah, you can't really duck behind the 13 because of the five. And oh, against right, a player like and against a player like Stan, you never want to let another guy back to the table playing eight ball. It's just unless you can completely cinch him up. And this is close. This is a tight bank. Okay, he's hit it well. Now the table opens up for him completely. And his choice of how he wants to run the balls is totally up to him. Uh, probably going to the nine next, it looks like. That's what he's done done perfect speed if it were up to me I'd use the stripe by the three which is the 15 ball I'd use that last to get to the eight so I would pick off the nine 14 13 15 then the eight I yes. think James uh, agrees with that as well and this will be a nice opening run first game jitters are always a thing he doesn't want to be on the right side of that 13. So that could cause 
a little issues unless he can hold there. But that, in my opinion, was a little bit lazy. If he comes out more towards the two, he's guaranteed to get position on the 15 here. He just, what I mean by that is he doesn't want the wrong angle on the 15 to go to the eight. Okay, he was able to hold it very well. These diamond tables bite very well. Looks like they've gotten some play throughout the week, Kevin. And so far, this is looking pretty good for uh, James Davey. Yeah, speaking of uh, diamond tables, so the equipment we're playing on, these are seven-foot diamond bar boxes, uh, Simonis cloth, Aramith balls. The best of the best. I, well, I I agree with that. I actually just got off the phone with the CEO of Aramith and Simonis. Uh, we were on the phone for about 30 minutes, and they are launching a brand new 100th anniversary ball set, and it's going to be something something to uh, keep an eye out for. I'll post oh, it on nice. my page shortly. Can't James wait to Davey see that. takes game number one. No, it's going to be pretty cool. They're, they're, they're processing ball making, so they won't even allow – Ivan into the factory where they make the Aramith balls. It's been around, the company's been around over a hundred years, literally over a hundred years. It's been through different names until it came to Ar be Aramith, but the process and, and the chemicals and the way they process the ball is very, very top secret. It can't be reproduced. Um, and, and this new set of balls that they're coming out with is a pretty costly set of balls, but I can tell you the process, uh, the material and, and how they're made is going to be even better than anything that's out now. But that's kind of a, a little tidbit of information there. Get back to the match. James Davies, so is it winter break, Kevin? This is alternate break. Uh, rack your own. Nice. Um, these players are choosing to use the template rack, but the template rack is optional. That's not required. Okay. It looks like both players are breaking from the side, so they're using the traditional. They're using the traditional. Yeah, they're using the traditional second ball break. I, I, I have mixed feelings about it, and I know a player like Shane Van Boning and others have mixed feelings about it. Here's the problem with the yeah. traditional, the traditional second ball break is that a lot of times you tend to have clusters, um, which make the runouts much more difficult. You can't oh, yeah, we've pretty been, much assure. You've been talking about this. We've been debating that all week. <laughs> you know, second ball. Break, yeah, so you're going to see, you're going to see most top players if the table racks good, they're going to break like a ten ball rack. They're just going to play the two balls behind the one towards the side. That way, it's like tic-tac-toe if they pocket a ball on the break. Uh, but if you don't have that power, okay, or you can't hit them that square and have that particular 10-ball pop, then there's nothing wrong with the second ball break if you're comfortable with it. And Stan's got a shot right out of the gate. He's looking to go to the three ball. He can cut the five in the lower left corner pocket as well, but that's about his only options. He might be cutting this five. Yeah, that's if he wants solids. Now, the table is open after the break, so he could take stripes if he wanted stripes. Yeah, I think he I think he likes the way the layout of the solids are. He actually hit that very well to get the perfect angle to come one rail down behind the five. He's got to go to the five next, Kevin. Um, yeah. Whether he decides to come one rail up and run into the 13 and play the five in the lower right corner or comes behind the five. I don't know, though, that uh, solids, for me, were the right option, but I believe I believe they probably were, and he chose to go that route. He does have an insurance ball, which is the green six up there by the eight. He can play that in the top left corner. But now he's got some traffic to deal with. See, he's going to definitely go into the 12 ball, it looks like. He doesn't want to tie anything else up here, so let's see how good he hits this. Uh, he's hit it fat. 
And this leads back to his first shot selection, which could have quite possibly been the wrong shot selection. I don't know. Um, that's that's all up to Stan and what he feels. But solid, stripes were wide open except for the 13. And you could have utilized the 11 to get to that at that point in time. But let's see what happens. He's going to play the 9. I, I like uh, some sort of pattern like the 9, 13, 11, 10, 14. 12 8 but uh, we'll see what he we'll see what he thinks here yeah at this point of the rack it is kind of players preference there is definitely more than one way to get through this rack and that's the beauty of eight ball right and, and I think bar table eight ball is one of the best games in the world I really it's, do it's a it's world. a hard bar table eight ball is a hard game because you, it's such a small area with so many balls you get so many clusters you have to be a real surgeon to Absolutely. work your way through the clusters I totally agree, and, and and a lot of a lot of the great players love love bar table eight ball. That's about the only game, you know, that's that's challenging for a top player on the bar table. Yeah, yeah but, bar table but eight it's ball definitely is definitely a, a challenge. Yeah, it's a harder game than people give it credit for. No doubt, no doubt. But so far, he is on the same runout pattern, except he's gone to the ten instead of the eleven next, due to the angle he had on the thirteen. Now he's got a little bit of extra work to do. I'd like to try and come over here and split the 11 and 8 and get on the 11 next. But he might use the 11 last. Okay, and that's what he's chosen to do. I think he's gotten there. I don't I don't know. I, I, I felt like if you got on the 11 there, then you can get to the 14, 12, no matter what. Here he's got to contend with the 1. You just don't want to catch that one at all. I think he's fine, but we shall see. Yeah, okay, he just missed the one. If he catches that one, he could have ended up on top of the 12, but he's hit it well. No need to talk negatively. <laughs> I, be I, be I believe he is out. I'm impressed. I, I actually do know James. I've seen him many places. Uh, I've seen him in some tournaments that we play in. Uh, just didn't know how good he played, I guess. Uh, maybe he didn't do as good in a couple of the eight ball tournaments that, that I was playing in. But uh, I don't see why he didn't because he looks real solid to me. I like his stroke as well. He stays steady over the ball. No body movement. Yeah, Looks James like a is real... a yeah. He's a real solid player, one of the best in the Pacific Northwest. Yeah, the, uh, all the I one one thing I really like about this tournament, and I do miss going to this tournament, is the equipment. Everything is perfect. You're using the best balls. You're using the best cloth, and you're using the best bar table on the planet. Everything plays true to form. Everything plays consistent. You could put this bar table in New York City, or you could put it in Chinook Winds. It's going to play very similar. Right. Speaking of right. Chinook Winds, uh, we are coming at you live from the Chinook Winds Casino Resort here in beautiful Lincoln City, Oregon. And I would like to give a big thank you to the Chinook Winds for everything they do for the Western BCA, all the support they have shown over the years. It is greatly appreciated. Thank you. And speaking of uh, support, be sure to support our Fun Day sponsors. They uh, put up some money so we could have some fun before the tournament started, so show some love for them. And when you are in Can't. Seattle... Go check out Ox Billiards. That is one of the finest pool halls in the Seattle area. Be sure to go check them out. That's awesome, Kevin. You can't forget the sponsors without them. Absolutely This isn't not. possible. James Davey. Uh, they say he's a 70% favorite right now to win this match. That's pretty strong going to the second ball break again. He had a pretty good uh, spread. I think I'd say he had a better spread than Stan. Let's see. Oh, he hit. See, so he's hitting it head on. That's different. That's a completely different situation, and that tells me why he had a better spread. Although, this rack has some, has some tricks to it. Notice the green six blocking the 13. So you like the it. Stripes, kind of close. stripes or solids? Well, you can utilize the... You can utilize the 11 to get the 13 open, but I don't like the 6 there. But the problem is 
the two is covered by the 13. This is one of the situ I might shoot at this seven and to try and disturb it, hit it. Well, I don't like where the one is at. I'm consider he's looking at the seven two as well, shooting the seven and maybe ramming into the three and deuce. But the problem with that is you still got to contend with the the one biting that everything works out. So I don't know about that. This is kind of one of those situations you've almost got to be at the table to better to better read it. The 14 is the ball next to the 11, and it's not in a good position. I think I'm going to go with solids here. But the first shot is key. For you people at home, and I'm sure you understand bar table eight ball, the first shot playing bar table eight ball is the shot that will win you or lose you that game. And that's why you see James taking so much time here. I wouldn't even mind going rail first on that seven, trying to split the six and three and maybe catch the 13. Really, the only ball he has to move is that 13 ball. Let's see what he decides. Okay, he's going to the one now. I think he wanted a, a low angle on that one so he could frame into the two and try and disturb those balls down there. So he's gone too far. Now he's got some work to do, but the good news for James is that that seven ball could play a big factor in opening the two up. I don't know if that was the right shot. It was real tough to hold the speed on a cue ball there. I think I think that he was trying to stay below the one. Let's see if he goes to the seven next or to the four. Okay, he's gone to the four. He could attempt to get the right angle. I don't know if you can get the left angle of the three, meaning an angle where the cue ball is going into the 13. It's pretty tight due to where the 8 and 15 are, Kevin. Yeah, it doesn't look to me like he could get that, that breakout angle. doesn't look to me. I would really consider utilizing the seven, but... Yeah, this definitely isn't going to be the angle for it. But he could. I can't see where the six is now. And, and yeah. yeah, he's funny on both of these balls. And I, don't, I didn't see anything changing there with just center high cue ball coming out to that spot. I don't really... I would have been happier if he would have come to the left side of the table utilizing an angle on the seven therefore just for, because you have the so, six where it's at let me ask uh, let me ask this what do you think about playing for a bank shot on the two bank two ball in the side that that's possible he doesn't want to do that but it could it could be his last resort uh he that you know you don't want to play a bank shot unless you have to uh especially one to the side like where it's laying but it might be his last resort. He's considering, and this is what I was saying, he's considering utilizing a seven now, but he'd have been much better off just going ahead and spinning the cue ball with inside English, staying on the left side of the table with his last shot. Therefore, your natural angle is to go towards the three, 15, 13. But instead, he's come out to the center of the table to try and get an angle on the three, and he's fallen awkward on everything. Yeah, he was just looking at banking the six and dragging into that 13. That's a better bank, and that's kind of what I alluded to. That's a better bank. The ball is bigger. The pocket is bigger. Um, banking like this versus versus the two to the side. This is a good shot. He's just got to come away with a shot after he makes the bank. And I think he has. Yeah, he's. Well, this has turned out rosy. That has turned out beautifully is correct. Nice shot there, James. De nice shot there, James DeVee. Yeah, James DeVee is looking really good. His percentage is at 70% right now, so I don't know if it goes up 5% every game, 10% every game, but it's going up if he wins this game and I Yeah, it is. would give I would give him a a big favorite to to run this rack. Yeah, he didn't want to get flat here. He's gotten a little flat, so now he's going to have to do something with the cue ball. You notice the 8 is blocked to the top right corner. So I'm noticing a little 
a little lack of precision with the cue ball here in this rack, but uh, he's managing it, which is key to a great eight ball player. Let's see what he does. Nice, he's chosen to go forward, and that was the path of least resistance. It looks like James Davey is going to go up 3-0 to zero after three games. I think we're seeing why James is. Uh, I think we're seeing why James is sitting in the hot seat here. He he can play a little. He can definitely play a little. And, and Tony Bloom had told me about him, uh, and I just never really heard of him. I have seen him, but yes, he can definitely play a little. I'm right, gonna take a quick, uh, just a quick commercial break here. No problem. And just like that, we're back. I said it'd be quick. It was very quick. <laughs> I meant it. I noticed. I noticed <laughs> that uh, J James Davy has uh, gone up to a, another eleven percent favorite, and so this is just the the Fargo statistics, correct? Yes, this is Fargo. That's their chance of winning based on their Fargo rate and the current uh, score. It doesn't take anything into consideration, like uh, who's at the table, who's breaking. Sure. It doesn't take any of that into consideration. It only takes the score and their frog rate into account. Nice, nice. Well, Stan needs a very good break here, a good layout to get him started, get him on the board. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh, no. That's worst-case scenario. And solids immediately look good to me. I am your host, Scott Frost. I am joined by the one and only Kevin Ross, the, the man and with Railbirds TV. Yes, <laughs> sir. And I hope everybody has gone to YouTube and liked Railbirds TV. I know Kevin just put it up. Just go like and subscribe. They're doing a lot for pool. And they are also a subsidiary of the Derby City Classic. And they do side streaming, which is a great thing. And I've been doing some work with them there as well. It's been a lot of fun. And I am grateful to be on board. I'm wondering. I feel like he's going to take Solids here. And it's pretty obvious. Yeah, Solids seem, even to, even to a beginner like me, Solids seem like the obvious choice. Yeah, and I, I would want to do something with the three immediately. Something like the three, two, six, one, seven, four, five, or or some some type of pattern like that. I would I would probably do away with the three, two, six, and go from there. A lot of guys play ball in threes. It's it's all player preference um, at at the higher level. It, it's really how you feel. You can get the get the run done the best way and the least efficient or the most efficient way therefore there's a hundred different patterns when you've got ball in hand and everything is open I, I guess what this tells me is the three does go on the right hand side pocket therefore he's not forced to remove that three that changes things Yeah, this is a pretty important. Angle. Yes, yes, and this is a pretty important game right here. This is what you would call a swing, a swing game, right? If if James gets out here, it could kind of put the nail in the coffin with the alternate break format. If he doesn't get out here, Stan's got a chance to get on the board, and then you know it, it, things can change from there. Momentum can change, so this is a must get out as well for James, and he knows it um, at this level. You have to take advantage of every opportunity you get. And he has a big opportunity here. And he looks pretty good to me. He's playing the three, going to the two. Same pocket for both. And his speed is pretty good. I can tell you that he's he's uh, he's he's definitely playing good because that was a pretty touchy shot. I think he's a little below the two here, but he can go into the the right long rail and get there. 
he can come one rail out, or he could even rub the six if he has to. But I think his angle's perfect. So what do you think and about uh, ball in hand anywhere on the table with a, with a scratch on the break? Should it be in the kitchen, or do you, you like ball in hand anywhere? I like it in the kitchen. I think the rules for pool have become way too easy. I think it's become a big problem, especially at the highest levels. Um, but, you know, we used to play rotation, where if you scratch on the break, it's behind it's behind the line. Yeah, I remember that. Nine ball, <clears throat> yeah, so, you know, it's kind of hurt the games. It's it's made the game real easy for, for a lot of guys, and I don't think that helps for TV. They initially think that that helps for TV, but I think it makes it kind of boring. Um, people want to see tactical games. People understand it's it's a it's a different era. People do understand defense, but you know it is what it is. I, nice run by James. How do you pronounce his last name? It's Davy. James Davy. Okay, yes. Nice run by Mr. Davy. And he is uh, he is he is in complete control this match. But don't count Stan out. He is definitely a beast on these uh, bar in a bar box eight ball. Also, he can come back just as easily as James jumped out in front. Stan can come back just as easily. Don't count Stan yeah, out. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I uh, I I don't know enough about James. I would say on paper, at least I know Stan ten years ago on paper would probably be a, a slight favorite. Um, it doesn't look like that here today, but there's no way you can count Stan out. He's a he's a legendary bar table player, and he's proven himself over the years. Nothing else to prove. But uh, it would be a heck of a feat to come back in an alternate break format, being down four games to zero here. And if anybody can do it, Stan is one of them. Absolutely, he can. All right, here we go, James with the break. I find it interesting. I haven't seen a lot of guys break from the side rail but hit the head ball full. Yeah, that is that he, is unusual. It, he's hitting it square, and I guess it might have something to do with the template rack. If all those balls are frozen and you're hitting the head ball square, uh, he's getting a pop. So you'll notice the cue ball's coming off the table three or four inches, and uh, he's getting that 10-ball break pop, which is great which is what you want. Notice the 15 and 13. Okay, the 15 went in and, excuse me, the 15 and 11. He's got some clusters here, but what I was going to say is maybe these balls are reacting like a 10-ball rack, and that's what looked like happened there. So utilizing the turtle rack is probably, uh, or the magic rack, whatever it is, is probably what he's doing. Once again, I think solids are the way to go. And I think his first shot is going to be the blue two and try and open up that four ball going into the 14 because I think the three plays in the lower right corner, these are his only problems. Yeah, I agree with you. I think that three does go. <clears throat> so you, you just want to use a tip of inside English. You don't want to overhit this. You've got to kind of dig into the two a little bit. A little bit of a swerve. Um, but if you overhit it, hit it too hard, the ball will not react the way it should. Yeah, good hit. He didn't hit it too hard. He would have had a shot on the four ball as well. So he's done excellent there. Put a great stroke on it. And now the table completely opens up for him. And uh, the pattern he chooses is, is whatever he likes. I, I would want to knock the six down pretty quick and get to the five and three as soon as possible. And it looks like that's what he's going to do. Yeah, the, the only issue I see here could be the seven ball. Well, now it could be few other things. I don't think he meant to catch the point there, and he did catch that corner point. And this could be the uh, the opening that Stan's hoping for. He's going to have to play the one in the left-hand side pocket, Kevin, and therefore he's going to have some traffic to deal with. Yeah, you got to kind of let it go a little bit. You're going to be going into that 310. Uh, the, the, you know, got to make sure you don't tie something else up in the process. 
Yeah, he, if he elects to go into the 310, he would have to elevate and draw. If he just flattened out, he would not go into the 310. But I think you're right. I think he's going to elevate and draw into the 3 and 10. Typically, when the balls are wide open, good 8-ball player never wants to touch anything else. You, you don't need to uh, go into anything else unless it's necessary. But it looks to me like he is going to go into the 310, kind of control the cue ball a little bit more this way. You just hope nothing else ties up. Yeah, it just felt to me like he'd be letting the cue ball go too much if he uh, shot with a high ball, and he did control I that agree. beautifully. Absolutely. Now everything opens back up again, and he can use he can use the five as his last ball. I like playing the four, three, seven, five, eight. He's going to choose a different pattern here. Looks like he's going three, seven, and then four, five. Yep, that's right. Oh, and I can't tell the angle he had. He had a perfect angle to to play it this route, which is much easier. It looked like he was a little steeper than that on camera. Boy, this is uh, this is turning in to be a little bit of a bloodbath. The only thing Stan has done wrong so far is he scratched on the break once. And that's eight ball for you, right? Uh, right. Things, things just get funky for you and, and don't lay right. Uh, so Stan has broke twice, I believe. He, he scratched once. What happened the other time he broke? Did he come up dry? Well, he's had remember. to break twice. I, I don't know either. I can't remember. Um, but he has broke twice for sure. Oh, I think he scratched on the break. I know he scratched. Do you, did you mention that? You did mention yeah, that, right? Yeah, he scratched right? one. He scratched he on scratched the break, once. and I, I don't believe... I think he did have... He did have a shot, and it was a cluster, and I'm not exactly sure what happened. Oh, he hit the ball too fat in the top left corner, missed the ball. That's what right. he did. He did make an error. He did make an error. They've got James DeVee at a 96% favorite to win this match. I and the feel tournament. personally like, well, obviously, yeah. I feel <laughs> like that's a little steep. I, I feel like that's a little steep. If I were a gambling man, which I'm not, <laughs> this is your, I would probably have to take a uh, stand there because I'm sure the odds would be through the roof. Yeah, so if you were if someone was laying you twenty to one, you would take a stand twenty to one. In a in a heartbeat, that's a huge price twenty to one. That's an absolute huge price. Cause they're not playing twenty games here; they're only playing seven. So right. the, the the real the real line should be more like uh, six or seven to one, probably maybe eight to one at the most. Twenty to one, I would uh, I would phone every friend in the country and we would be betting it. <laughs> For a hundred dollars. Hundred dollars yeah, to James get you two thousand. Is... Yep, I, it's not bad action. Not at all. James is definitely on fire. It looks really solid. And you can tell that's why he is in the uh, in the hot seat. And at this point, the man breaking is in the actual hot seat. He's down five to nothing, and he needs something good to go his way and I'm just not a huge fan of this break but these guys love it stripes look okay yeah yeah it would be nice to see them go back to the old rules a little in, in some of these games I, I really think it would help a, a lot of different things yeah, I remember nine ball. The, I remember when nine ball when everything spots, <laughs> everything spots. Yeah, and it's absolutely. Ball and, it's, uh, and it's in the kitchen after the break. What happened was a uh, there was the Midwest or Texas Express tour that was going on back then, and a committee came together and they came out with what's called quote unquote Texas Express rules, yep. and what it was designed for is to speed the tournaments up, right? And then yep. they got this idea that oh, this is going to make it more exciting too, and I think that backfired. He didn't want to catch that ball there. He got a 
pretty unfortunate rub, and that is Murphy's Law. When you are behind, he would have liked to have been able to cleanly make the 13 or the 15 next. Now he's forced, unless the 11 goes. He might be able to cheat the pocket, nice you know, pocket speed, and just <clears throat> dribble that ball in. Yeah, the only issue with shooting this 14 is you're going to have to draw back you might have to draw back. You might be able to play the 15 next. But if you have to draw back, you could disturb the 6, and it might go in front of the 13. I can't quite tell the angle he's got here. I think he's got to shoot. Oh, he's playing the combo. Hmm. Boy, I don't know about that. I guess this is all he's got. I know he can make the 14. I guess he's worried the 6 is going to come over and block the 13 if he shoots the 14, maybe. Okay, that's well, nicely done. It turned out he's pretty still nice. Still got work to do. Still got some work to do. It seems like everything's been, and, and that's just how it goes, right? It seems like right. everything's been a struggle for Stan, and sometimes the balls just don't want you to win. Um, I, I mean, I, I got to admit, he's the one breaking them, obviously, but uh, you know, it's just the way it is. And I like what he's doing here. I felt like you should go to the 15 next. If he can hold it for the 10 in the side. Oh, did he not get there? Well, I, I think you can shoot the 15. I, I don't see anything wrong with leaving the 11 there for right now. I think you've, the, because of the way those balls lay, you're kind of, I, I don't even like going to the 11 right now. Because if you snooker yourself on the 15, then you're done. I would rather remove the 15 right now and and kill your cue ball, play the 10 on the side, and then you can you you've got you know multiple ways to get on the eight by shooting the 11. So I don't know why he's so focused on shooting this 11 ball. It's not necessary. You can see that he's he's perfect on the 15. Okay. He's and come to his nice senses. and easy. Yeah, just nice and easy. You can just a low drag shot here. Yeah, just like so. Very good. Seems like he's made that a little tougher than he needed to. It was uh, it was laying really nicely. Now you can just come one rail out and play for your two rail position or three rail position in the left hand side pocket. The lay is natural. Well, he's gotten pretty steep. He should be fine. He could have just, if it was that straight, he could have just drawn out a or two. Just doesn't want to catch these two balls up there, the one or the five. Yeah, nicely done. Stan, I think, is going to get on the board, folks. And that is good news for the Stan Tarango fans. There are plenty of Stan fans here in the, here in the stands. Yeah, that's great. I don't blame him. Stan's a great guy. On the scoreboard, 5-1, race to 7. And so, that 20-1 to 1 is looking pretty <laughs> good for me right now. So the chat wants to know, is Scott still playing one pocket? I am. I just started training again. Um, I took I took uh, like a month, month and a half off because I played for about three straight months. I started just started training again. Uh, I've got the Texas Open, Buffaloes. And another one pocket major, three of them coming up in the next uh, month and a half, two months. Uh, so we'll give it another run. I've been exercising a lot, so I'm riding my bike seven days a week, and I'm I'm on light weights six or seven days a week, uh, multiple times a day. This guy, <laughs> he he's putting a he's putting a picture of me jumping a ball that had to have been back in. Uh, that 2001. Was in, uh, <laughs> uh, I think that was uh, 2014 when you came to play the Chinook Winds Open. Oh, nice. Okay. Cool. All right. Well, let's get rid of that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. So James is to break, and this is this is why stands a 20 to one underdog, right? Um, but he's really not a 21 underdog because any little thing happens, he catches a scratch, the balls tie up and make it difficult. Let's see what happens. Funnier things have happened. I can tell you that. Boy, I'll tell you what, though. He's he's really 
getting the most out of the break. I don't know if he pocketed a ball there. He might have overhit those, uh, but boy, he, he with his height, <clears throat> he's he's uh, able to get a lot of leverage on that cue ball, and you can tell that he's got power. Stan coming to the table, he broke dry. Now things are shifting, right? Yeah, if Stan can win this game and then break and run a rack, he's right back in this. Yes, exactly. And, that, and that's why uh, I, I think 20-1 to 1 is really steep and, and, and would jump on it because funny things happen. And when momentum swings, not only do good things happen for the other guy, but the guy that's on the other end of that that was in the lead starts to feel the, starts to feel the heat. And, and things can p compile there. I'm not saying that's what's going to happen. James DeVee has played really like a perfect set. I think he overhit that break, personally. Um, he hit it, it seemed like he hit it a little harder than he's hit all the rest. And believe it or not, overhitting the balls sometimes can cause too many collisions and too much traffic, and they just r knock each other out of the way from going in. The key here is to pick the right balls to shoot first. He's going to the four. Okay, I, this tells me the six goes. Boy, I don't know if the six goes. If the six goes, then that, that's ideal. You can pretty much stop right there. If he got straight on the one or on the seven, he could just draw back a little bit. He really... It looks like... Looks like he's shooting a one. Is he trying to rearrange the furniture? Yeah, a see. <laughs> yeah. Mm. I, I'm not. I'm not a fan of that. I. I just don't like going into the balls unless I'm absolutely forced to. Obviously, the six didn't go, and now it really doesn't go. No. Um, I think he's. I think he's got to cut the one, uh, three and go into the six fourteen right now. I don't think I know that that's what he's got to do. Now, you want to play to overcut this. Hitting it too fat cause you to miss it. Well, he didn't get it to the pocket. A lot of body movement there. Big opening for Mr. DeVee. And I would bet that he takes full advantage of it. You can get to the 14 from the 9. I almost like going to the 15 here and getting some type of position on the 11 in the right-hand side pocket for the 9. That way you come one or two rails back up to the 14 in the lower left pocket. I don't see it necessary to shoot the 9 right now. You can get on the 9 utilizing the 11 down the road. Uh, I don't know if this, if this angle carries you to the 14. I think it's a little too steep. So I would let those balls rest for a minute, unless he's trying to go into it. These guys like to go into a lot of balls. And, and as we've noticed, that can cause problems. And I like shooting the 15, coming two rails with the cue ball, then the 11, then getting your perfect angle on the 9 and playing the 14 in the same corner. But he's trying to take care of it right now. The problem with going into the 14 right now is you could get stuck behind that 2 and be cut off from everything, right? If you come into the back of the 14 right now, there's a lot of bad things that can happen. I, I don't feel that this is the right shot, even if it works out. Well, we're about to find out. Yeah, and I mean, I, it could go right, but percentage-wise, what I'm saying is... Yeah, it's turned out okay, but percentage-wise, a lot of things could go wrong. Uh, a, a top player, or I hate saying that, but a, a world-class player would not have played that ball. He, he would have got to the perfect angle to come behind him. But he's hit it very well. He's proven me wrong, and, uh, and it's turned out good. I think he goes to the 10 now, right? Or can he cut the 11, Kevin? I think he's going to the 10. Uh, I don't, okay. That that that's a. Well, it's gonna prove me wrong too. So there, now we're even. We're both proved wrong. It looks like well, just he, such uh, a. Looks oh, like it a looks a lot cut. easier here. Okay. Yeah, it's a lot easier here. 
Well, you hit it pretty fat. It did catch the point on the way in, but still fell. And, and sometimes, guys, just so you know, I'm just pointing things out that might help you, I hope. Um, I could be wrong on some of the things I point out. But typically, when you're looking from the outside, you see patterns a little bit better than when you're at the table. Um, there's no right or wrong to, way to do something if it works out. But what you do want to do is eliminate the percentage of an error. And so the game is all about percentages, right? Yeah. Absolutely right. That's what right. it's all about. Ooh, does he have a shot? Right. Does he have to slice the 15? Yeah, he's going to have to he's, slice the 15. He's been, the <laughs> yeah, he's been trying to get rid of that 14 for a minute now, and I believe he's over hit the ball twice. So, I mean, he should be fine. He can stop his ball here, play yes. the 14 next, then the 15, come over for the 13, and you're good. Um, but he looks like he wants to play the... 15 and the 14 so his patterns are a little different than mine uh mm -hmm. there but it's okay it's okay if it works for him it's okay i think it kind of depends if that 13 passes the eight um i was going under the assumption the 13 did not pass the eight but if it does that does change well, things. Uh, it does change things but what he was doing prior tells me that it didn't pass the eight well now the cue ball did just bump the 13 but the way he played a couple of the shots prior, it told me the 13 didn't pass the 8. That's why I felt like he shot a, should have shot the 14 first there, not the 15. Got your angle on the 15 to come one or two rails over for the 13 in the same corner. So I felt like his choice of patterns were a little off there. And I might be right about that. Whether this works or not, he's made it much more difficult on himself. Does he have to go forward two rails for the 13 in the same pocket? Well, I don't even know. He looks like he's real flat on this ball, meaning straight. Uh, he does have the top side, which means he can go to that long rail. He, Let's just see what he does. Well, he's he's gotten there. He's gotten underneath it, and that's probably about as good as he could do. Um and he's working his way out of the trouble pretty nicely. Basically this to take a six to one lead. And he's pocketed it. He is going to take a 6-1 to lead, Kevin. And now that 20-1 to is looking a little bit better. <laughs> Are you well, still, he's uh, managed it well. So someone offered you 20-1. to If someone offered you 20-1 to from right here, would you take it? If, if you're betting sure. On stand? I, I would. I would take it. For $100 okay. all day long. Yeah, absolutely. That's a huge price. That that price is out of line. That, that, that price is actually... Out of line. Twenty one's a little steep. You'll never see a top sports site or book in such a short race lay that price. Now, if they were racing to fifteen, and uh, and James was up fourteen to three or something like that, it, now your twenty to one price might might come into play a little bit more. But when you've got such a short race, your price can't be much more than the race itself. Um, I mean, the race is a race to seven. Now you're, you're right. doubling, uh, doubling the price on 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 the on the money there. So whoever gave that twenty to one up would be out of line. I don't think. I'm going to uh, I'm going to make a quick little ahead. change. I'm going to make a quick little change to the settings here, see if we can improve the smoothness of the video. Are uh, Are you still there, Scott? I'm here, brother. Video still coming through. Yep. All right. Good. Hopefully that will smooth things out, and we'll see if that helps. It looked good to me. I didn't have any issues on my end. It was smooth. All right, good. Boy, that break just scares me. I feel like he could catch a kiss and scratch. Notice all the balls clustered. Although these aren't bad, solids look nice. If he can get on that three, that'll, that'll lead him to the six and seven. 
So I would I would expect Stan to get out here. Although I I expected him to get out the last <laughs> game in in the game he he f flustered on. So he's struggling a little bit today. Yeah, hmm. I think this will be okay, but he, he's actually gone a little too far to hold his cue ball for the three. So he's going to have to find another route to get close to the three to play the six and seven. He doesn't need to use the three to play the six and seven, but ideally you want to remove the three and hold for the, the six and seven, and that opens the rack up. He looks like he's going to go forward into the five. That's no good. That is no good. It seems just a bit weak. The, the, the last game, he didn't get the three to the hole. Looks like he's got some body movement going on. I think he filled, up, the tank. Now, I think he filled up his tank with that cheap gas. Yeah, and it, it's hard to find that cheap gas, so he must have went way out of his way to do it. Uh, I think he's got to cut the three here and, and go back and forth 26 times. I don't, yeah, I don't I think mean, that. He, he, yeah, I don't think that five goes to the corner. You can't see the two. I mean, he could he could nip the five, feather the five, and try and wedge him behind the two. He might be able to see enough of the two to nip it, but really, I think he's going to try and do this. He's done okay. He's done okay. He didn't want to have to do that, I can promise you. DeVee looking at the jump shot, possibly on the 11. It is tough. You're pretty much a, almost a full ball jump on the 2, and it's just a few inches from the cue ball, so it would take a very accurate jump. You probably almost have to land on the 11. Yeah, you'd need one of those uh, Dr. Popper or the Marty Carey jump cues to jump that 2 ball, I think. Yeah, it's tough. I know Federer could jump that ball with his eyes closed, but <laughs> I don't know about too many others. I don't know what he can do with this 15, so... And, and the good news for Stan is that the 5-2 combination on the side is on if, if James decided to leave him low somewhere. That's going to cost him. Yeah, it looks like he's looking at, uh, yeah, coming off the side of this 15, just trying to get this cue ball down on this bottom rail somewhere, trying to hide him from the 5-2. Yeah, I think he's going to do a little bit more than that, try and get him up under the 6 and 7. Yeah, like so. He just didn't quite hit it hard enough. Yeah, anywhere on the bottom rail wouldn't have been any good, so he tried to tuck him up under the 6 and 7, just didn't quite get there. And this has really helped Stan because he's opened the seven ball up for Stan, and that'll lead to position on the three and six. Now, I really think Stan's out here. Well, he's got some body movement going on. Yeah, but he always does. That's Stan. Yeah, I know. <laughs> he's not going to change now. Not going to teach that old dog any new tricks there anyway. <clears throat> I think it's just a little bit more magnified being down 6-1. to one. It might just be rearing its ugly head. And typically that's what happens. When the pressure, when the pressure really gets on, um, you, your mechanics tend to be exposed a little bit more. And that's in any sport. Nicely struck there, though. He stayed down well, went through the ball well there. See what type of angle he wants to play on this six. <laughs> I don't know. 
Yeah, I think I you need he's to be got higher. Draw. Yeah, you need to be higher the six. You can come two rails <laughs> around to the back to the middle of the table, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, one or the other. Uh, oof. Yeah, he's just uh, just making life tough on himself. He doesn't want to go into the ten or thirteen here, so he's got to put a touch inside on this. He's Nicely done. Well. Don't want to be elevated. Or, all right, he's in a clear. I, yeah, very nicely done, Kevin. 6-2. Still showing signs of life. But he's got to fade, yes, change his sure break, is. though. Right, he's got to fade it every other game, and that's a that's a problem. You know, I, I, if James went to school on what happened last break, I would expect him to take a little bit off of this one. We all want to hit him a hundred mile an hour. James looks like he's not missing any uh, any weight rooms. Uh, pretty pretty big guy right there. Gee, many crickets. He's got the arms the size of uh, <laughs> Hulk Hogan. Yeah, we call James uh, Big Daddy. He's he is a big guy. He's well over six feet tall. I mean, uh, I mean you are too. So, yeah, he's definitely a big guy. Yeah, he's. Let's see how how hard he hits these. I wonder if he went to school on his last break. Uh, typically, a a player of his level will. Highly analyze every break and what the balls are doing. So on this Make table, adjustments accordingly. what we've seen so far throughout the week is when players have used the template rack and break down the middle, they've been getting a fantastic spread and making a ball every single time. I haven't seen as much success breaking from the side, but James is going to. But he's hitting that. the, but he's hitting the head ball full, so right. that really doesn't count. That's that's almost like a center ball, or excuse me, center table break. Mm -hmm. uh, as long as he's hitting the head ball full, he's getting good spreads. That's so it's pretty pretty much the same thing. He just feels comfortable putting his hand on the rail. He might get more leverage that way. Uh, he just overhit him last game, and then he took some off there. And you'll notice that he pocketed a couple balls. He really overhit him the game before or the right. last time so he broke him. James has made the 8 on the break, so under uh, CSI Rules 8-Ball, what that means is the 8 will spot, and James will have the option to either continue shooting or to rack him up and break again. Yep. Same rules as the U.S. Open 8-Ball that I recently played in. Yeah, they were probably playing CSI Rules most likely. Yep, they sure were. Stripes look good. So they... the, he... he He's got a nice layout. Uh, he's just got to be able to get to the 12. I, he's looking at the, the the 14. I would be looking at the 9. I want some type of an angle to carry me down to these that ball right there. I would look at the 9. But once again, his patterns aren't going to be the same as mine. Everybody plays the game differently. I just don't know if he's got the... Does he have the angle? Maybe he's got the angle and I'm being misled here. Oh, yeah, he might be able to cheat this. He's done okay. He's going to be okay here. Nice rub on the three. It just looks a little steeper at this angle, but the other angle looked, looked pretty... pretty Simple. Let's go, Stan. Timbo Miller. Yes, sir. Stan is the man. He's just got to get a couple games under his belt. And then a couple more. And then a couple more. <clears throat> yeah. He's got to no win doubt. a ball from here. But you can't think like that. Like, I think it was just one game at a time. One ball at a time. That's you exactly can't think, right. Can't think I'm down six games. You can only think I uh, just got to win this game. That was nicely controlled. I love the way he controlled that. He played to go into the 10. He knew not a lot could go wrong there. Where are all the James DeVee fans? 
They're all in Are the room there? here. They're, they're all they're all they're all gathered around the table here. It's standing room only okay. around the table. Let's see it. All right. I guess that he's he's going to take the fifteen now. Do you go to? Can you go to the eleven next? I don't think so. So this is a, a situation where being at the table is, is going to make a big difference because you can see those little angles. I don't know what angle he's got right at the moment on the 15. I think it looks like he wants to go to the 13 next, which I like. If the 13's got a full pocket, Paul Bennett, go James. All right, let's do it. <laughs> if the 13's got a full pocket, he wants to remove it now. Yeah, I don't think he wants to do it with that angle, though. So now he's going to go to the 10. Or is he? If he is now, then that tells me he's got a full pocket. Hard to tell on screen if it's a full pocket or three quarters of a pocket, but he definitely has, <clears throat> definitely has more than half. I know that. Well, he wouldn't be shooting it if he if he didn't have a full pocket. That's that's kind of my point. You're not going to shoot this because you're coming away from it. Therefore, it could have skid. Yeah, he has a full pocket. Nicely done. And I would uh, I would color him gone. We will see. But he's only got four balls away from the Western BCA eight ball championship in the elite singles division. Pretty impressive. Undefeated, right, Kevin? That is correct. James DeVee sitting in the hot seat, undefeated. Uh, Stan, if Stan were to come back some, somehow this set, we'd have to flip a coin and do it all over again because this is true double elimination. Got it. Nice stroke. Punched out. Wants to... Yeah, I mean he's he's got a good shot on the ten too. This is all this is all personal preference. You can come one rail over him between the five and two, playing the ten ball. Needs a little bounce a, here. I think there's a opera singer in the background somewhere warming up her vocals, getting ready to sing. Yeah, this is about over. Two rails out for position on the eight in the lower left corner pocket and the championship win. How many players did you start out with in this event? Uh, well, we were broken up into seven different divisions. I think the elite division was the smallest because that's of the you know the upper Fargo rate players. Um, so I don't have that number handy. That's fine. I put you on the spot there. And you got to warn Two me. Rails <laughs> out. Give me a heads up. <laughs> Just kidding. You just... All right, this needs to slow down for the tournament. He didn't want to be on the rail. I can promise you that. Yeah. You don't want that. Uh, you don't want that as your last shot. But he will uh, be a heavy favorite to make this. Just have to watch that scratch in the side off the seven. But I don't think that's going to be an issue. James DeVee, your uh, 2023 Elite Singles Champion. Congratulations, James. Stan Trango finishing second. He played a fantastic tournament to get here, just couldn't make it happen in the finals. I've been joined by Scott Frost. It has been a pleasure having you here as always. Thank you guys for joining us, and thank you, Scott, for sitting in. Hope you had a good time. Uh, it was great. Thank you so much, and I appreciate everybody putting up with me. James DeVee, <laughs> man. He uh he he was in full control of this match and it looks like he deserves to win this tournament. Uh, we can all see why. Stan might get him next time, but thank you all for having me. And until next time, we'll talk to you soon. See you guys.